All right, footy is back, or at least footy is done for round 11. I'll tell you that. I can't believe it's round 11, Alex. This no. is just silly. Anyway, g'day. I'm 90s West Coast Eagles legend Brett Hetty. Wait, no, I'm James Clements. My yeah. ears don't stick out as much as Brett Hetty. Oh, I love Brett Hetty. That's like, rude. Brett Hetty was a dude who's like footy card you had like 87 times. Like, why do I have so many Brett Hetty's? <laughs> Can I not have this many? Bre- Who wants to swap a bunch of Brett Hetties? <laughs> I'll give you of- seven Brett Hetties for one Philip Matera. Then you've got like 87 Marcus Ashcrofts as well. Anyway, g'day. I'm James Clemens. This is the <laughs> AFL Today Show. This is the Round 11 Rap Show. And joining me for it, because Stats Boy, he died in a grease fire, I reckon. Uh, I think he is dead. He might have actually died. We should Maybe we shouldn't joke about it. I don't know. Either way, joining me for the Round 11 Done Show is... Local weirdo, foot enough. Mm. Swans fan, you can barely tell. No, oh, right. Hat, shirt. What is it? Yeah, hat, yeah, hat and, and shirt. Jersey. The, the shirt was intentional. The hat was pure accident. I just picked up the first hat on the way out. It was that oh, or a Yankees one. It's Alex Donnelly. That's yeah. who he is. You can what? hear him on football today as well. Yeah. Uh, we are going a little bit early today because, hey, I've got a gig to get to, but also these last two games, uh, overlapping and both are done. Yep. Uh, basically. The, You'd be shocked. The Crom are absolutely smashing the Eagles at home. And we have, if St Kilda were to pull off the comeback here, they would have to kick more goals than they've kicked so far this game. So uh, in 13 minutes yeah, left in the game. So. Not, and they've just missed, missed another one. one. Fantastic. Yep. All right, but footy is back. What a round 11 it was, Alex. Yeah, it's oh, great. Jeez, it started off pretty awesome for your team. <laughs> and then, boy, did it devolve in a lot of sooking. Yes. Oh, time wasting. The Pies get another draw and they have a big old sook. Yep. It's pretty funny. The... Umpires, though, will be a, probably a bit of a point of contention for the rest of this week. I think yep. there weren't many games that didn't have some sort of weird umpire intervention. It was a high level of frustration on Thursday night. Yep. Uh, even yesterday's GWS Geelong game, which was yep. an absolute belter in the end, had some really weird umpiring. You're like, what is going on here? That came after I took the squid to the Carlton game as well, and that just devolved into... Is someone going to run on the field and just like king hit an umpire? Because I'm not going to put it past this. <laughs> or just crowd. steal a whistle. Anyway, uh, what else? Is anyone else near Sydney's level? Um, not right now. Nope. What, t- 10 points in front or whatever it is at the moment? Uh, on the ladder? Two games. Two games up. Yeah. And the Giants, they got a bounce back win against the Cats. Yeah, that was a huge win. Like the tsunami feels like it was back. Um, the Suns traveled south. They, they're they a hot weather team. Yeah, so they the fraud watch was well and truly back. Me yelling about Darwin isn't real. And Ben Keith's hair true. is just psychotic. Yeah, it's anyway, great. And what is it here there in Adelaide? Yeah, bodies and barrels. Yeah, yep. Ben Keith. Uh, I'm just saying. Maybe look into that. Anyway. Fraud watch the top eight teams as well. 100%. We've got a lot of frauds here, I think. Well, it's also like it's in Tassie. Is it real with Port Adelaide? You know, they no, were very Nothing close in Tassie is real, yeah. real, remember? Nothing in Tassie actually happens. Well, especially when the crowd doesn't turn out. Oh, yeah, it's North Melbourne. I don't care. That is shocking gear too. Anyway, should we do a ladder check? Yeah, we might as well do that. I think we will. better for you this week. I'm feeling much better about my week <laughs> because, uh, I don't know, the Blues won. Yep. And they sit in the eight. So... This is presuming that Adelaide win and the Melbourne Demons are about to win. The, so. de- the Demons are going to win. Like, they're about to go 60 points up. Sitting at 10-1, and one, your beloved Sydney Swans <laughs> on 40 points. That is six yep. points clear of Essendon, of course, who are the best team in the AFL, if you listen to the AFL media. <laughs> also, the percentage of 150.1. It's uh, The Swans' percentage is set for the rest of the season, so if it comes down to teams that have won the same amount of games, which probably won't happen, the Swans are going to come out on top. The bomb rays are at least over 100, which is good considering they're in second. 8-2-1, and one, which is chaos. Below them, you have just by themselves, did it even happen if it happened in Tassie? Nope. The Port Adelaide power. They've got the power to win over the ruse, apparently, just. <laughs> it was a little bit sketchy there earlier. We'll get yeah. to that in the wraps. Then we have two teams on 7-4. and four. It was the two teams that played on Friday, Saturday evening, rather. GWS and Geelong. Yep. Both 7-4. and four. Then you have... The hilarious Collingwood Magpies who have pulled off the very rare two draws in a season to completely negate the advantage of having a draw. Yes. So that is now essentially two games for one win. They're still unbeaten since round two, the Pies. That is nuts. They're 6-3-2 and two, and in sixth, my beloved Carlton a 7-4. and four, Yep. Uh, also on 28 points. We are, however... The lowest ranked of the seven and four 28 point teams. Well, Melbourne's about to jump over everyone yeah. and be. F- Melbourne's going to be fifth in about seven yeah. minutes. Carlton, uh, seven and four with a percentage of 104.9. Yeah. Frio in the eight at the moment. They will not be in the second. Uh, Melbourne will be seven and four as well. Yeah. Basically, you're sitting up there, as you mentioned, in fifth ahead of Geelong. Then the Gold Coast Suns. 
Ooh. <laughs> still, still, zero and five away from home, six and zip at home. It's I just, told you. <laughs> warm weather team. Simple as that. The Bulldogs, the line of demarcation in the AFL has never felt more real. Yep. The Dogs are five and six after, what was it, Thursday night's loss. Yep. Uh, losing more players. Aaron Norton got hurt, but apparently hasn't done his ACL. Which four to is six wild, weeks. given that angle the it knee was horrible. at. It was gross. But no ACL done, which is very good news. But they are five and six. They've yep. got this incredible percentage, 121.3. But it's because they beat Richmond by 100 points. Exactly. They still stink. Yeah. Apologies, producer Gerald, who is a, uh, the world's biggest Western Bulldogs fan. <laughs> uh, you then have the Brisbane Lions, who are also frauds, who are 4-6-1, and one, having just lost to the team below them, who are 13th. Hawthorne. What about their percentage? Hawthorne's percentage is 82.8. I don't know. I'm no math magician, Alex, but that sucks. Uh, (laughs) Adelaide, a 3-6-1. They will be 4-6-1 after this. They're going to be be 12. They'll be jumping ahead of... I reckon they'll get ahead of Brisbane on percentage here. You reckon they're going to boost it by 11 percentage points? That's currently 65 to 16. They are smashing it. Anyway, Adelaide will be bumped up there. Then we have St Kilda, who will be... Three and eight. Yeah. West Coast will be three and eight. Yeah. West Coast have a percentage of 77.1. Yeah. And the execrable Richmond Tigers. They were good. They they fought hard. They fought hard. Honorable loss. Time. At least was honorable. It's the hope that kills you, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's always the hope that kills you. I don't think any Richmond fan logically expected to get that close last night. So. That's, what, that's the half the problem. You're like, yeah. oh, we put up a fight. Ah, oh, I mean, it would be nice if we won. Yeah. And then languishing in last because they're horrible at football is the North Melbourne Kangaroos led by master coach Alastair Clarkson, apparently. Or as we call him around here, Alistair Clarkfold. Gross. Positive. Uh, they're not going to lose next week, Jim. Interesting. They have the bye. They have a bye. <laughs> There you go. The line of demarcation is real, though. It feels like every team above the Western Bulldogs could beat each other. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Apart from Sydney. It's basically Sydney and then everybody else. Then you get to the dogs and it's like just the nice creamy middle of the AFL. I reckon you could get go down to Adelaide even, and I reckon they could do it. So I reckon you could go from second to 14th. Right. Uh, One little thing about the Swans. The dominant league. Let's lead at the top with this one. They're 10 and 1. Yes. What happens when you start 10 and 1, Alex? Um, I think the last couple of times the Swans have started 10-1, and one, they've played in the grand final. Well, 21 of the past 25 seasons has featured a team that's gone either 10-1 and one really? or 10-0. and z- zero. I'm going to assume you missed the grand final. Of those 20, nine of them won the entire thing. Oh, Not okay. Bad. Including the last, was it, three of the past five premiers. Collingwood last year, yep. Melbourne in 21, West Coast in 18. Melbourne in, uh, two years ago were 10 and zip and then lost two in a row to Freo on the Swans and then their season just went... Fell apart. Well, that's when Stephen May punched Jake Melksham. Yeah, that's I happens. don't think Isaac Heaney is going to get in a scrap with uh, Jake Lloyd. I uh, don't know. <laughs> Who knows what could happen. Either way, let's do the bit sesh. <laughs> bit sesh. Uh, Can we just quit it with the umpires ruining perfectly game, good games of football, especially in the dying moments? Or just like, can we just not ruin games in general? I yeah, know, I'm going with by. games rather than the dying moments because I feel like the we yell about the umpiring and get angry about the umpiring, but it's also they are professionals who are paid, I believe they're paid well, not a full-time great wage yet, but it's also you are professionals in the highest league in the nation and you're bad. Yep. Like there's got to be – we talk about players when they're out of form and there's big articles written about them. They get torn apart on the TV shows. Why can't we say, all right, insert Nathan Williamson on Thursday night, for example, umpire 22, was horrendously bad. This is getting weirdly personal. No, it's not. But he was just, <laughs> for me, because I was watching the game, there was five or six decisions that he made that were the wrong decision when he either blew his whistle or didn't blow his whistle. Like the Chad Warner tackle, which he called high, it happened 15 metres in front of me. No, it was not high. He's paid that, and then the 50, because Chunley's like... Oh, man, look at the scoreboard. Like, it's not – it wasn't dissent or anything, yeah. but it's it's the double down factor, and then it's the – you consistently get them wrong. At least so with the Collingwood Freo one, which is obviously the biggest talking yes. point. By the letter of the law. But they've shown five times this morning that there's been five separate it's times it's been paid this year. It's happened this year. Justin Longmuir was like, hey, man, they have seen it happen. Yeah. And Craig McRae's like, what? <laughs> Never happened under my watch. It, it it, but then it was proven that it had happened in a Collingwood game earlier this season. So I think for the vent sesh, though, the entire approach from yeah. that was that it felt, felt like the umpires had just gone. I think there was a moment just before that where Steel side bottom had like just acted yeah. like a bell end to the umpire. Nick, to umpire Nichols. And basically he was like, all right, a bit of a rev- I'm just sick of this. Gentlemen, I am sick of this. Do yeah. not do this again. And then they do it. 
But that's Tip also. Edge. I don't it's mind that if you like. If you do this again, if anyone does this again, yeah, it's a him. free kick. And like by the letter of the law, it's naturally a free kick. But it's also like reading the room. And sometimes like they're just getting up and they're throwing the ball like in the vicinity of the umpire. But when I'm like, the, producer Gerald, for those watching, is the umpire. And I'm just like, hey, Jim, here's the footy. That's just gen. I, I'm fine with that being a free kick. Yep. And anyway, Dacos realized it. It was ridiculous. It sucked. Just at the same time, just don't, I don't know. Help or hinder but, and, you know, basically decide games. That's all know, we ask. But I know people go, oh, you can't yell at the umpires without them. We don't have a game. It's like, well, yes, we can because we hold them to a standard that we expect. And it's we, gone downhill so can, badly all this we, year. Oh, I'm pretty sure all we ask for is consistency yeah. and, like, pretty half-decent interpretations of the rule. The classic idea of this is the pub test. But also, right? like the you go, plane 50. The pub test, you go... Was that where the person was tackled and dropped the ball? Do you think that was correct disposal or improper disposal? Yeah. So like everybody in the pub would be like, yes. And the umpire was like, oh, I reckon play on. You're like, <laughs> come on, what are we doing here? This makes no damn sense. You're breaking my heart. Uh, there was also a great one where I think the uh, in the Carlton game, Zach Williams uh, going back with the flight of the ball, perfect spoiler, actually yeah. like happened right in front of uh, myself and the squid where the closest umpire was like, no, that was all good. And the middle umpire was like, he dropped his arms. And then they showed the replay and he didn't chop his arms. It was yeah. a perfect spoiler. So, all ball, all that, ball. That's he what went I mean. bang! Like, I love the, the 50 meter penalty for obvious reasons that it was a goal to the Swans and that, but it's also like, it, it absolutely wasn't a 50. He, he could not stop his, I think it was Vandermeer. He couldn't stop his momentum. And everyone's like, oh, the dogs would have had a chance. Like, well, no, McLean still would have wasted 30 seconds anyway, but still. Yeah. Anyway. Weird one. Just sort it out, AFL. Please. I hate, like, there's nothing more I hate talking about than umpiring. <laughs> anyway, let's do some game raps. Let's go. Game raps. Go, 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 go quickly. Yep. The Sydney Swans, 102, 88, beat the Bulldogs. Mm. You were there, Alex. Yep. Take us through it. Uh, the Dogs, they got the jump on the Swans. So for the second week in a row, the Swans were like, ah, oh, we need to start playing football. Um, so that could be something that teams could see earlier. The Swans are very, very slow to get into the games and they've conceded the first, you know, four or five goals in both games. But for Western Bulldogs, I believe the Dogs should have won. They were the better team on the night. But once again, didn't take advantage of everything. Another night, they've dominated the, just all the stats, but they didn't win the game. They had most possessions, most shots on goals, most clearances, most inside 50s, and they've lost. 12-16 to 16-6. There was probably four rush behind, so that's 12-12. But it's like you missed a couple of sitters and the Swans just took advantage of their opportunities. Like 16-6 says that scores from intercept is where the pressure gauge is for the Swans. They scored 68 points uh, from intercept compared to 47. And 75 tackles to 54 was the big difference. The pressure from the Swans, despite not playing great, was just elite all night. It was just, we're going to outwork you and win this. But in saying that, Norton's knee injury, the concussion to Richards, who was probably best on ground at halftime, absolutely killed them. Scott, it was in the first three minutes. Those things happened. That's unlucky. Um, if I'm a Sydney Swans player, I would have stopped kicking it near Liam Jones. Just a thing. He, it felt like he took 15 intercept marks at one point. It's just like, uh, uh, Liam Jones, okay. Uh, but for me, Chad Warner. He got angry in the, in the third quarter after that uh, horrible holding the ball decision. Probably took mark of the year of the week of the month. Kicked four goals, had 25 touches. He got three Brownlow votes and everyone just like, hey, hey, he's the guy. Like it's it's one of them. If Heaney's not playing well, Warner steps up. If it's not Warner, Errol steps up. Of note, Errol played 124 of 128 minutes. His aim is to get to 100% game time. He had one rotation That's all night. Awesome. And he just kept running up and down the wing. Uh, just cutting laps, bro. Yeah, just yeah. cutting laps. It was ridiculous. Also, we've called it the Jamara game. He had one of those nights where he had the sticky fingers, but he couldn't convert. Yep. But there was just times he's like, I'm Jamar and I'm just going to win this. And he's tried to do it. And same with uh, Sam Darcy. He has those games where the ball just literally looks attracted to him. He's just like, oh. I've got the ball. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. I really didn't even try, but it just landed he's on just, me. He just puts himself in these great positions, and he just, he's a freak. Yep. Trelaw had 30. Yep. Bont was pretty good. Um, you didn't really notice Bont at the ground, though. didn't a goal as well, which is like one of those Bont games. You're like, yeah. ah, just the impact. It's yeah. just that little bit lessened. Um, still five clearances for him. I think six for Trelaw as well. But they won yeah. center clearances 16 to 8, and this came despite Grundy dominating the ruck. Overall, the ruck was 51 hitouts to 34. But Grundy got the better of English, even though it gave him that love tap at one point. Yep. Uh, anyway, good win. Swans need the bye. They were cooked in the last quarter, just like against Carlton. But, hey, they're 10-1. and 1. 
Spot the lie. Frio Collingwood played out a draw on Friday night, 75 each. The, what was it? The Dockers just coming from the clouds? What was it? It was like four goals, wasn't it? Yeah. Like late that they had to kick. And I would have did it. played football for more than seven minutes mm. personally, but Maybe. you know, what do uh, I know? It was a strange one. Look, Jeremy Sharp, I think I tweet, I think we tweeted out <laughs> the simple fact that he looks like the evil rich kid <laughs> villain from like a 90s teen movie or something that Rachel Lee Cook falls in love with. <laughs> But I also love him. I'm yeah. like, ah, he's just so handsome. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Can I come and hang out at your country club? <laughs> we'll be friends. Uh, but he played an awesome game, I yeah. feel like, for most of this and then misses the last one. You but, can't hold that against him because it's like, oh, he should have kicked the winner. It's like, no, you've had three quarters of a game to do that as well. He was also like a big reason they actually sort of stuck yeah. around for a big chunk of it. Uh, Hayden Young was hand, like handy. Uh, Bailey Banfield I was love playing. Bailey Banfield. He's, he's playing awesome. awesome football at the moment. Josh he's Tracy, also with handy. a handsome 11, uh, 18, Bailey nice. Banfield. I'll pay that. Yeah, uh, I will allow it. But Jeremy Sharp enjoyed that one. He had like 26 touches as well. Mm. Like what a weapon. Uh, outside of this one, it's always fun when you see and you're watching Jaeger and Mira still running around. You're like, I love that your name is Jaeger. <laughs> and I love that I've been watching you basically since the last time I had a Jaeger bomb. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because uh, he's like 30. Yeah. And you're like, how, you look 27, like 21 yeah. the entire time. Yeah, I'm he's... pretty sure you just got drafted. Yeah. That's how you roll. Um, outside of this, Joe Richards was fantastic for the Pies, which was hilarious. Uh, one of your great super coach pickups. More injuries again with my check. He's going to be out for an extended period with that hammy again. Yep. It's not great. Um, like, what do we do with Collingwood? They're, they're, they Walking are just two draws. They're so just weird. hanging around at the moment. And everyone, like, oh, we were robbed because of the umpire's decision. <laughs> you kick 10 goals, 15. Bad kicking is bad football. We'll get to that again in the Brisbane Lions game. Ugh. You've had the chance to ice these games, and you didn't. You gave the other team a sniff. Just imagine if Lockie Schultz was still alive. <laughs> he would have had a real chance in this game. Yeah. Just saying. It's weird. They're weird. Uh, what You also had, what, Pierce and... Pierce going forward and kicking the goal. That was amazing. That was an incredible Lovely moment. Lovely moment. And Luke Jackson had, like... Like a really interesting sort of game, right? Where Eleven disposals in and about early, and then you're like, "What has happened? What has happened?" Is this that he, he just went completely MIA? Is this bizarre. the Gornicus and Grundy thing happening right in front of our eyes once again? Sean Darcy, but the problem that Sean Darcy is always injured. Like, what? What anyway. do you do if you free it? Because they'll look at this as a game they probably should have won and somehow didn't, and Collingwood would go, "We've let that one slip." So my it's ent- weird. My entire approach is going to be from the Carlton lens, right? Of like, do you need two ruckmen, or do you just need one who can be like awesome? Who can also play as a second as a midfielder like Tom DeConing can and yeah. Luke Jackson can. We know he can do that. Sean Darcy, it's a good ruckman, but I, again, my entire thing is always going to be ruckman don't win flags. As a, as a, you're gone, as a Sydney Swans fan, having Brody Grundy in as the base, basically fifth midfielder is great, and then McLean just comes in and for five minutes. It's yep. great. Flip side, Todd Goldstein, smashing it. And the yep. Bombers are the best team in the AFL. Yep. Never forget that. We'll anyway, great job by the Pies. Harvey Harrison, what a fun story that is. Yeah. Three goals in that game too. Very nice. Either way, it's hilarious because it leaves Frego outside the eight after this Melbourne game. And also, Mason Cox with the, with his variety of injuries coming out of that game too. He, he also did, tried to put his knee through Sean Darcy's chin yeah. uh, in a jumping contest. You're like in a ruck contest. You're like, what? Has, has he played footy before? Yeah. Does he understand how this works? He do, he clearly doesn't. Again, if he wasn't tall, he wouldn't be playing footy. Um, Jai Miss had a just oh. uh, yeah. a Barry Crocker shocker, yeah. I believe is the phrase, right? He just. He, he was absolutely, he was spraying it like he was a fireman. Just, oh, my God, I'm gonna, ah. Anyway, he was spraying it like my five-year-old trying to figure out where the toilet is. Oh, God. Anyway, it's like, was that the dog or the kid? <laughs> what is happening? It wasn't here? Larry. Anyway, let's speed this up. Yep. North Port, this was a game and then it was not. Booze everywhere for the Hornet. Jason Hall Francis. That was Francis. pretty funny. Uh, I appreciate power it. Power ended up running right over the top of the 107.48. It yep. was a game early on, though, right? Like, while you're up after, well, so while you're up, was for uh, Freo. I forgot to say that the entire yeah. time. My bad. But then Yata Pulti. Yata Pulti for the uh, for the power. They end up winning by fifty nine. Watching the worm for this one is hilarious because it's like, ah, oh, North are here. Oh uh, god, it's gone. <laughs> it's, game's over, man. Game's over. Zane Dersma I kicked the goal in this one, but you're still watching this going. Huh. I watch Zane Dersma huh. and I'm just like, I don't know if he was the right choice when he was picked. Maybe. I, I know he's only a kid, but. He geez, he doesn't work hard. No, nah, LDU had thirty-five and a goal. He's back. I love that. He's trying to get I was also like early on the LDU train for mm. uh, the Supercoach turnaround, so I was yeah. pretty 
Stoke with that. He's not on my team, though, of course, because I'm a moron. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it goes. Uh, elsewhere, look, you had, what, five, Ma- five Todd Marshall this goals. This is one of those Todd Marshall games where, like, we'll look back in it six happens, months and, and be like, like Todd Marshall five? kicked five? Yeah. What? Makes no damn sense. Yeah. Uh, Willie Rioli was injured as well. Yeah, he was. Rosie. Rosie was clutching at the hammy early and we're like, why, why would you play him against North? Why would you risk him? And then it's like he's played out the game, but he's only had, a, what, 11 touches? Yep. Or something. And even Butters didn't really do it. I know he kicked two goals, but he's only had 19 touches. Like It was one of those games where it's good for Port where it's like, hey, our stars don't have to dominate this yep. game and we're going to win. Yes, it's North, but they can play badly and we're still going to win by 10 goals. Uh, it was just a strange game as well. Like you look at – the way like Zach Fisher's getting 32 possessions for God's sake. It's his role, right? Yeah. He's sort of just taking back over what Sheasel was doing earlier in the season. And Clarko Ball is just, you know, he's one step ahead so of another loss. What do we 11. say about North Melbourne? Like, no one's they just turning... conceded 100 plus for four straight weeks. Yeah. No one, horrible. No one's turning up to these games anymore. They're getting 4,000 fans. And it's just, it's not competitive. And I, know, and I know we said that last Stats year. Stats guys not even here and we're still bashing him. This is great. But it's not bashing him. It's not bashing him. His it's, team stinks. Yeah, exactly. We like, should be absolutely smashing Clarko. And because he's mates with everybody in the media, no one's doing it. Clarko, you're cooked, mate. Pack her up, boys. You're done. I know it's going to cost you an arm and leg to cut him loose, but geez, like, you can't cut him loose just yet. I understand It's impossible that. to be worse than what they are. But you watch their games, you're like, what is he actually instilling? Look. Like, because there's, like, so little competitive nature in some of these games. You're like, this yeah. is shocking. Yeah. Like, they have bits and pieces for 10 minutes while they'll show something, and then it'll drop away for 15 minutes. There's no – it's just no, no consistency, and they don't have – they've got four really good guys, not enough creamy middle, and a lot of really average and guys. And the power are uh, paper tigers, I still reckon. Yeah. What are they? Great they're, job. They're third. Good for them. Oh, they're, like, eight and three, aren't they? Yeah. They're like, who have they beaten? <laughs> Essendon. It's, it's like they've beaten the best team in the AFL. Jim. Yeah, but back when Essendon weren't the best team in the AFL, yeah. which they are now. <laughs> hey, Carlton beat Gold Coast. That was fun. One hundred two seventy three. They actually did it vaguely easily in the end, but it wasn't easy for essentially three quarters. Um, we had a typical Gold Coast horrendous quarter. Yeah, the Suns just basically went right. Uh, we're not going to let you kick two straight goals. Essentially, after you go off to a bit of an early, uh, I think we had the first like three goals maybe. And uh, Zach Williams in the Jack Martin role. Yeah. Don't mind it. Kick four goals. Looked likely. Also has lower leg problems, just like Jack Martin. They might be the same person. <laughs> <laughs> it's breaking my heart. But the, I think the Zach Williams one that he kicked where his uh, body is being flung in the air the opposite way to the goals was essentially basically the turning point for the game because yeah. they had not been able to manufacture something out of nothing all game. And then they did. And you're like, aha. And then they went on a little bit of a roll and away they went. Um it was a laugher for the Carlton midfield because early on they just had all the running. It was disposal, 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 where they just completely smashed them. Uh, they were winning the clearances pretty handily as well, and they weren't making them pay. And you're like, this is definitely going to come back to bite them. <laughs> yeah, it looked that way watching it too. Like, how was it at the ground where – it was tense. It was always tense, like until basically the end of the third quarter where Kennedy kicked that last goal from the boundary. Yeah. Uh, that gave them enough sort of breathing space. Like if they kick the next two goals, this game is kind of basically done, and then they did. So uh, it was kind of a nice moment where they have like all the run of the game, all the ball, and then Carlton sort of just cook it enough that they let the Suns, I don't know, breathe a little bit, let them back into it. And Ben King, I don't know what it is when he plays the Blues. He's just like, hang on a second. I want to try to win this, Coleman. <laughs> Blow it at your nose, Charlie Curtis. Like, Charlie Curtis up the other end. But I want to win it. But the biggest Charlie thing, couldn't kick straight. He was horrible. His radar was well, gone. Well, to be honest, look, he had, he had a couple of pretty good ones, but he had a couple of Barry Crocker shots yeah. as well. But, look, the biggest point of concern for me probably is just their inside 50s and a lot of it's to do with, like, Sam Walsh. I love your yeah. warper. Uh, but wow, his kicking is not great. No, not Never great has at all. Been, though. And it's just like he had a million touches. He had thirty-two touches. And but it was one of those. It's like oh, I've had thirty-two, but where's the damage? Yeah, I think that there's a there's an interesting sort of aspect there, right? Yeah. So the damage is oh, he's got a lot of. He it. got us the ball. That's good. But then if he's using it and turning it over, it's not great use of it. It's like he had three clearances. It's like but like who would you rather? His his thirty two or Chad Warner's twenty five on Thursday? Ooh, obviously Chad. Yeah. But 
I don't know. He was still very, very, very handy. It's just like these inside 50s where he's just like, like just every so often. It's like it's two for every four shocking ones. He's got two good ones. So it's a weird bit of balance, but I don't know. By the time the end of the season rolls around, he should be right. And then it brings up the argument, who would you rather, Rosie or Sam Walsh? And it happens every week. And now it's like this week, Sam Walsh is winning because they won. Uh, But TDK, Tom DeConing, out there by himself. It works. I love it. You know, mate, I've been yelling about this from the get-go. When Pito plays, God, lo- love him. Like, he's awesome. They're just not that great with him, right? No. And TD- TDK just had, what, 25 touches, 10 clearances, 27 hit-outs, going up against Witsy, yeah. who's a weapon. Witsy's a beast. He's he a is, big boy. He's awesome. And it was a really fun one. The Suns, it's just so hard to read anything on them, right? They're away from home. Jack Lacoche just could have torn the game open and just didn't. He missed a couple of ones. Yeah. They didn't miss any shots on goal, basically. It felt like from half the game. And yeah. then they missed a bunch of them. And you're like, whoa, that's a bullet dodge. Yeah. Uh, Noah Anderson was really well held. Took Miller was really good in the like in the middle. But they also had stupid sexy Flanders as a laid out. That, and that really hurt. <laughs> that so, sucked everyone. I'll tell you who was team. awesome. Mac Andrew. That he's great. Dude is unreal. Like you can't, if he's playing you one on one, you're like, what are you meant to do? His arms are like just giraffe necks. Like, yeah. you just can't get past it. It's the him. go-go like, gadget arms. Like, Charlie Kerner, every time he, like, actually marked a ball, it was because Mac Andrew wasn't on him. Yeah. It was, like, pretty crazy. That was a fun sort of back and forth as well between he and Mac Andrew because Charlie did kick, what, four goals for. And I look forward to Mac Andrew playing on Jamara. That'd be fun. But good stuff. I don't want to whinge about the umpires, but wow. <laughs> because I was wow. going to bring this up. The... Four holding the balls called from 131 effective tackles all day. Which I was going to bring it up in my what I can't stand later, and I'll change it to something else now. It's but simply, it's like, why aren't we paying it anymore? There's so many tackles where the ball spilled out. And it's because they changed the wording of the rule to effective, dispo- uh, effective disposal. But what happened? The, if you have prior opportunity, you pick up the ball and I go to stiff arm you, but stats guy tackles me, I've had my prior opportunity by trying to stiff arm you. Yep. But they're not calling it when they bounce it out of the tackle. It just makes no sense. And it's, as a fan, it's really frustrating. And you just, I don't want to keep yelling about it, but it's like, guys, come on. So you asked about what what the vibe was at this game. Yeah. So so much anger. Yeah. (laughs) Towards the umpires. By the time the second half, it was just like disbelief of like, what is going on? This is bonkers. Uh, There was a guy who just kept screaming out, umpire dogs, umpire dogs. Umpire dogs, they're amateurs, and you're like, yeah, they are. It's, it's, it's fair. Can't so, disagree with him about either way. Carlton get a win that they desperately needed because uh, I think we've talked about this Carlton sort of six week stretch. They've actually sort of won a couple of the games too, which is keeping their you know hopes alive of at least maybe maybe a top four finish. Who knows? But either way. Yeah. Big one coming in the next couple of weeks when they play Porton and the Bombers. So, anyway, GWS, hey, what happens, Alex, when they play in Geelong? Ah, uh, they win, Jim. That's right, 78-74 oh. in an absolutely rollicking clash. I'll tell you what. So, actually, Carlton, Carlton Gold Coast was rollicking as well because it sort of was scrappy and just kind of gross. But when it sort of got going, you're like, this is pretty entertaining football. And then, especially when Carlton sort of got over in the end. But this was very, very, very yes. much just an arm wrestle of like, we're ahead. We're going to beat them. No worries. And then Geelong like, just not so fast. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. We're, Hawkins' is big day. We're not losing this one. And uh, so what? Stephen Coniglio has a shoulder injury. And he p- tried uh, to play on for it, the psychopath. Like he was running around like his arm was down his arm. I was like, nah, nah, it's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> and then eventually they're like, dude. Just but a scratch. Yeah. They're like, no, no, you, you desperately need to come off. That looks bad. So there is a great note there that. GD was led by 31 at this point. I think I was messaging you guys going, yep, Geelong, frauds. Yeah, and then I'm like, a few moments later. A few moments later, and they were back up in front. And then, how did it all sort of fall apart? Toby Green's captain goal. Yeah. but What a goal! What an insane goal! But you're missing the the six-goal second quarter for the Giants. That's really set this up. We're early on, Geelong were just like, ah, we're back, we're home, this is fine. And GW was like, tsunami! Yeah, <laughs> and then they're just like, engage, let's go. Uh, that miss from Jesse Hogan... Uh, as soon as that happened, Geelong just like, ooh, chance. There's, I, It feels would, weird. Everyone sort of went, that would have been the kill sw- kill shot. I really want to get like a complete list of who looks the worst when they miss a goal. Like Jesse Hogan just has this beaten dog look and he's like, oh, I missed a goal. Oh, Adam Kings is going to have my legs broken. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just exactly how it rolls. Anyway, look, this Geelong team and what's happening 
in Geelong where they suddenly just don't win there anymore. Yep. It's getting weird, Alex. It's what was it, Power weird. earlier this season? Yeah. It's now GWS. What's going on? It's bizarre. Jezza Cameron, he had like a couple of shots where I think he's, you know, it's it's all well and good to be sort of pumping the ball when you're kicking snags. But when he's not kicking them, it's like. But when you're putting it out on the full from like the boundary line as you're trying to like banana it, you kind of just look like an idiot. It's a bit of a tough one. But it's uh, like in that last quarter when Geelong were charging, GWS just could not get the footy outside of basically, if there was a 70 metre line, they couldn't get it beyond that. If we were going to rank the teams of like, their best and their worst. Geelong. Like Geelong and GWS yeah. would be like right up there with like their worst looks absolutely shocking. Like they got, dem- this is the other thing about Carlton. Carlton beat a team that dropped 164 points last week. Yes. On Geelong and held them to 73. And like it wasn't even, like it was like two goals for like most of the first half. Um, whereas Geelong got belted from pillar to post last week. Were right there in this one, but still lost. And at home. Are they frauds? Yes. All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, but so, like, Jake Riccardi kicking four goals. Maxi Holmes was everywhere, 32-1. and one. And we talked about the Toby Green moment, the inside-out banana. God, that but was he, good. But he had 24 touches and two goals. So he's finally had that game. But then it's also the moment on top of playing a really good game that could spark him and the Giants into action. And it was this point last year, GGWS went, hey, hey, Adam Kingsley's going to bash us, so we're going to start winning games. <laughs> but, we better be good. He's going to have our legs broke. Yeah, but the pressure level from both teams that last quarter was over. The, you see it on They showed it as well. It was it's awesome. It was 190 like, is like, yeah. 195 is apparently the perfect range, and they're like, <laughs> nah, over 200. It was like 240 to 210 or something. Yeah. Like, That's just all pressure. <laughs> There's nothing else. Yeah. What are you doing? You guys are just standing there staring at each other. <laughs> <laughs> so do something. Anyway, great win by wow, GWS. we haven't mentioned the new cult of the AFL. Oh, yeah, Lee Kalea turned into Leo Barry. Yeah. That was awesome he's like check this out remember leo barry he was a star bang here i am and he's out there taking one million photos as well after the game i can't <laughs> sing the song i missed the song and the, Incredible. jason dudstall's losing in the commentary guy he's like nah just just keep taking selfies yeah, i'd keep doing it that's great <laughs> but this is a great win for the giants it's sort of after the it last few season like season basically like alive well not alive but it's like okay it, 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 the, the the hill was coming. They were just going to start rollicking down and be like, oh, well, had God. they lost it, they'd be six and five, and you'd be like, ugh. Yeah. This isn't looking good, but that, you know, seven and four feels a lot better. But you're long from seven and oh to seven and four. Yeah, not great. <laughs> not great. Then dream time, yes. Richmond, 74, the bomb raise, 86. This was a really fun game because Richmond actually decided to show up. Yeah, this fun was great. Opinion. Fun as. Yeah, uh, I think we're going to get this every now and then with Richmond. So on an occasion like this. When they play at the G. Yep. And something's on it. And they're up against like a storied rival. Yeah. Yeah. Dusty was awesome. He was. Shea Bolton had a moment. And then he got murdered. Yeah. And yep. Jakey Stringer decided, hey, it's my 200th game. Check this out. Also, and went back and kicked, what, three in the, like, the first three goals of the game? And then kicked, awesome. kicked his fourth in the second quarter and then... Uh, went, right, that'll do, boys. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, con- contract year. Everyone remembers what I've done early in Langford, the game. you take over. <laughs> yeah. I love it. But that. Zach Merritt. Just does not stop running. He would have to be one of the best tacklers in the game. Like, he just does not stop. Richmond should have won this game, though. It's a tricky one. It was a fun one. They had every opportunity to do so. And you just think with if, I know it's he's still out, but if Tom Lynch was in, in the forward line there, they would have won this game because Ridley wouldn't have had 31 disposals and somehow got forward and kicked a goal. Uh, ben Mackay was taking grabs everywhere. Like up against Lafau, who's he's doing a good job. He's kicked another two goals and he's doing this. What is it? He's like seventh game? Yeah. He's, he's there crushing it. He's kicking goals every game. It's just like if you had Tom Lynch there, I think Richmond win this game. For me, it's like Essendon. It's like. Nah. We, Essendon are the best team in the AFL. They've got away with one there. They have. And it's like big That's game. What you do. That's what good teams do. They yeah, just win. Exactly. Just shut up and win. That's all they do. It's amazing. Uh, this is like a really fun game because like it's like, oh, Richmond really stepped up. Essendon also love nothing more than sort of playing down to their competition. Yeah. So good on the bomb raise for actually pulling it off and winning. Uh, but you're right. Like having, what, Ridley come back and just be that good straight away was it's amazing. It's so good for their season. God, they look so much better. Martin nearly had 30 as well as Zeret hitting the 31. Dyson uh, Heppel was popping around. We're also t- forgetting the MVP of this game. Our favorite son, Nick Hind. <laughs> I mean, he's got, a, he's he got, he's got a head like a drop pie, but it's amazing how good he was in this yeah. game. <laughs> I love it. So they've got like so many dudes where you just like, they don't have too many dudes. No. They've like, which is what we talked about at the start of the year, too many dudes. 
They've got like Durham and Guelphie are doing great what, jobs. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Durham has been absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and you're like, what is like these are the sorts of dudes that you need. Yeah. Whereas like Durham and Guelphie just like crushing it. Two meter Peter, he had an absolute Barry Crocker shocker as yeah. well. But anyway, a huge win. Enjoyed that. And uh I think there's nothing more fun than remembering Dyson Heppel looking like Xavier Rudd with the white boy dreadlocks. <laughs> nothing more favorite. Yeah. Like, I love it. So he's like, oh, he's still out there and he's just a really good coach on the ground. It's like, remember when he had dreadlocks, though? <laughs> I just want to hear one commentator just say that just once. <laughs> remember that? And then turn to Daisy Thomas and go, remember your hair? <laughs> just like, bring, just go absolutely hammering time. So I love that. Anyway, great win for the Bomb Rays. They are the best team in the AFL. Sunday, yeah. Hawthorne upset. Or did they? The Lions, because yeah. that's all they do. They beat them. They beat 175. Brisbane. Bad kicking, Jim. Oh, boy. 10-15 for the Lions. That's not great. 15-10. Flip it up and reverse it. You have the Hawks. How nice is that 15-10-100? I love the 15-10-100. That's so good. It's like, that's my childhood going, 15-10 is 100. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then me like, 16-4 is also 100. <laughs> oh, man. But look, the Lions stink. I think that's it. Yeah. I they're think, not that bad at Marvel either, right? That's the I thing when gone. it comes to the Lions, but they are basically now cooked. And Kick them three goals, 10 in the second half. Yeah. It's gross. They also have what they've not beaten the Hawks since 2019. Yeah, they've lost That's four in a row now. Gross and hilarious. But it's it's you have a look at like at the starts of this game and you see that Lockie Neal has 29 touches. He's one of four lines to get more than 20. Seven Hawthorne players had more more than that. And watching the game, it made sense because the Hawks were just running everywhere. Jack Ginnivan, I don't think I've seen him play a better game. He was in. He, had he was unreal. 22 touches and a goal, but it's the run and the pressure. It's him buying into this system. Well, him also just being there around the ball yeah. makes basically everybody on the other team go, there's Jack Ginnivan. God, I want to punch him in the head. And it basically takes their focus away, yeah. right? So all the lines like, God, I want to punch that little twerp in the nose and just... Rah. And they just sort of freak out and then boom, off they go. Mm. It's like Gunston was incredible in this game. He Charles played a great awesome. job on um, uh, was it Harris Andrews. I know Harris Andrews, he took six marks in the last quarter, but before then he'd hardly got near the footy. Love it. So it's a great role on that. Uh, the Hawks... They genuinely dominated. They deserve this win. Good for them. Uh, Carl Amon and Warple had 20, 29, 28 each, but were just everywhere the whole time. When they fire, it's just it's they good look to watch. like a completely different team. But like, we saw them play probably their worst performance of the year at the MCG where the Swans just obliterated them. Yep. But we and also saw then, one of their other best ones when they played Collingwood together. Yeah. So. so it's like you look at the – if they win if they win that game against um, Collingwood, which – they probably should have. And if they win that game against Port Adelaide last week, you have a look at the ladder. All of a sudden, they are six and five mm. instead of four and seven. It's a tough one. Like, they're I not. Don't know. Also, don't give up two goals in 33 seconds. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but the forward pressure was great from Hawthorne all throughout the game. And the thing we've said about the line is Lions, what do they offer? Like, where's where's the sexiness to their game? They are the beigest of beige. They are. There's no run. It's just they are bland and boring to watch. And apparently Eric Hippel was the problem. He didn't play. Didn't play. Joey Duckett's was just like, hey, oh, I'm still here. Charlie yeah. threatened to do some stuff early in the game but really didn't. It was just I got nothing for the Lions. I, they'll miss the eight. I don't know. Kyle Lohman's awesome. He seems cool. That's fun. Bring back Shadow Brain. Oh, and Lloyd Johnston's like backflip in the Blues game. That oh, yeah. was sweet. That happened in front of us too. You're like, wait, did he just do a <laughs> sick backflip? <laughs> How did we miss the backflip? It was absolutely unreal. What a legend. People go, oh, should he be doing it? Yes, do it yes. all the time. That's weird. If he can just do that like that and not hurt himself. Yes. I love it. All right, last two games. Uh, Laffer, Melbourne, 162. What do you reckon my over-under was? There like 30,000 people in there. Yeah. They probably beat it. Not by much. I don't know. I'll check the uh, MCG Twitter account for you. <laughs> Either way, look. It's, this was a pretty gross game until like the D's just finally sort of put the thirty seven four oh three. Oh, pretty close. Just yeah. saying. Uh, just a simple sort of gross St Kilda game where the demons finally fired up and got going late and ran over the top of them. Right. Yeah. Uh, Petrarch was fantastic as per usual. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. Salem had thirty two touches. Uh, Gornicus. He's Gornicus getting three votes. Was absolutely fantastic. And I think the cool thing is, like, when you see a – like, Rue had three goals in this one too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Petrarca and Viney. Look, when they have their midfielders kicking goals, they just look unbeatable. And yeah. you're like, yeah, but at the same time, they played the Saints. Yeah. Rue are very, very bad. They are horrendous. Like, it's – there's – like, Darcy Wilson's a bright spot for them, but it's like when when they don't get it on their terms, they are very bad to – they're just bad to watch. Melbourne sort of 
halfway through that third quarter, you're like, oh, yeah, the Mel- Melbourne's going to kick 13 goals and win this. But they've kicked away late. So I was like, oh, yeah, their percentage well, is they gonna- kicked 14-16. Yeah. And to nine goals eight. That's – look, I'm again, I'm no math magician, but when you almost double up the mm. amount of shots on goals well, the opposition. Four, eight at quarter time to not much. So it should be – like it, it was game over at almost quarter time and then St Kilda sort of had a sniff halfway through the second quarter – but you're just watching the game. You're like, the D's are going to kick away and win this. Like, I know Wanganeen Malira had about 700 meters gained, so he's trying his guts out. It was probably one of his better games for the year. But it's like two dudes will do something. Jack Steele had a bunch of the footy, and then a bunch of others are just like, nah, I'm just, I'm, I'm good. It's weird. They stink. Poor, just they're done. Back her up, boys. You're done. Where is Nam? Nah, I mean, Sakilda. Sorry? You said port. Oh, port, did I? Yeah. Yeah, Saints. I said you, pour it out. Oh, sorry. Pour one out yeah, for, for the Saints. Oh, Euro, Euro, Euro Rock. I think I've put That's right, that. Euro Rock. Yeah. And uh, Nam, look, it's still really tough to sort of, like, they. these are the exact games they need to keep on winning. They're now fourth, actually, seven and four. Yeah, I told you their percentage boost the them percentage up. The percentage boost them over the top of the GWS Giants. So knocks the Giants down to five, cast to six, Collingwood to seven, yeah. Carlton to eight. Still in the eight, boys. We're all good. Yeah. Either way, a lot of inside 50s, 61 to, uh, 67 to 41. The Saints stink. Fire Ross Lyon. And then finally, Adelaide are running right over the top of the West Coast Eagles. Uh, we are in the third quarter of this game. Kawana well. versus uh, Walletij Marara. That's it. Yep. And it's a not a great game. Adelaide are going to win this by 100 points. Let's, I mean, Josh Dawson, when he was out there going, hey, Oh, it's always Jordan. Good. Jordan, Josh Dawson. Who the hell is it? Josh Dawson. You are losing Josh, it. Josh Dorsey is actually a uh, political journalist in the USA. <laughs> he used to work for the Washington Post. Yeah. He was the one I had a chat with one time. He was like, uh, got me on the idea of Outback Takehouse for uh, NBA Australia. Yeah. Because he's like, what do you mean you've never been to Outback Takehouse? Yeah. I'm like, Steakhouse. I'm like, uh, what is it? It's an Australian restaurant. And I'm like, no. got nothing. Is this and like then how he, we he broke drink- down every menu item? I'm like, oh, I've literally never heard of that. What are you talking about? <laughs> Is this like how everyone thinks we drink Fosters? Yes. Yeah. Exact same vibes. Uh, for this game so far, Key's already got two. Dawson's got two. Cook's got two. Matt Crouch has zero meters gained. Tough. Texas, <laughs> Texas kicked one goal too. Saligo's already got 14 touches. This game is pack right, boys. Yeah, Dunsky, this so. isn't. Like, this is. There was always going to be a couple of these games during the year for West Coast, and Adelaide do need a win like this. And this sort of at home, big run crowd, over somebody. Yeah, late Sunday game. You're feeling good about stuff. They've still packed it out, well, which is awesome. They're going to be four, six, and one after this. They're just they're, they're two games out of the eight basically, and it's very doable because. That creamy middle on the ladder, like from sort of GWS down, is 28 down to Adelaide are going to be 18. So that's two and a half games uh, between 4th and 12th. Whew, not bad. Creamy middle. <laughs> Tipping results. I think I got seven because I ended up landing on north because I'm a more – I galaxy brain my way into Hawthorne. Yeah. But went too far with the galaxy brain and instead had north as well. Uh, I don't know what stats boy ended up. You've got eight, Alex. Yeah, I'm going to get eight. Uh, the only one I missed was Hawthorne. Nice one. All right, yeah. full credit to the boys. Who is the best team of this round? Can we just give it the old ding, 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 ding. Oh, no! Sydney and the Bombers. Yeah. Because they're the two best teams in the AFL, and the Bombers are very clearly the best team in the AFL. And again, will not lose the rest of this season. Uh, easily, the Swans, the way they sort of came down, always a dangerous game. It's the Dogs. I was very worried. Marvel. And they sort of just went, we're just going to win. Yeah, we're going to find out. a way. And the Bombers, look, holding their nerve in a game as big as that, we're like, oh, God, we everyone, can't lose to Richmond. And everyone's everyone, watching. Everyone's turtlenecking as well. Every Bombers fan is totally turtlenecking going, this sucks. Can <laughs> we just win? So great job. Look, I kind of wanted to throw a little bit of you know love towards – your pick as well? Yeah, GWS. I mean, losing th- uh, four out of the last five and then going down to the Cattery and getting the job done. We didn't mention it was Hawkins' record-breaking game because he's had about 87 celebrations this year for getting it done. But I think it's time for Geelong to get another upgrade from the taxpayers because yep. the stadium seems like it's gone. But they really the- need that scoreboard. Yeah. <laughs> but GWS, big win. Still have a bunch of injuries throughout their midfield and forward line to get the win there. It really does set their season back on track going into the buy right. That They're in the buy right now going, how good's footy? Yeah. How good is life? That's exactly where you want to be. Like, Because for best teams of the round, like I can't say obviously either Free or Collingwood. Yeah. Port, the Ruse, whatever. Yeah. Carlton were wildly unconvincing for three of those quarters. And beaten Gold Coast in Melbourne. Exactly. Essendon getting over the top of Richmond in a crazy game. The Hawks looked awesome. But again, it's their Prison. bunny team, the Lions. The Ds. 
St. Kilda. It's St. Kilda and Adelaide are smashing the Eagles. So yeah. we usually do this sort of how do you feel if you're each team's sort of fans? Yeah. And like, what did you come out of each game with? And like, for the dogs, you're like, we were still competitive, whatever. Sydney, just like, we rule. Yeah, ours is, we won. Thank God we have a bye. Frio, you're like, oh, can't believe we tied that. That could have won it, though. Collingwood is like, oh, this is going to be tough sledding. Port, rad. You beat the Ruse. <laughs> Ruse, like, we stink. This is horrible. <laughs> Carlton is just like, oh, thank God we won. Gold Coast, like, can we just play all of our games north? Yep. We just need to be above New South Wales. Can't have South in a name. No South Australia, New, New South Wales. What about West? No Victoria. We're going to find out, I guess. Uh, Geelong is like, what? you're playing at Taxpayer Stadium. Why can't we get a win? This stinks. GWS is like, we're back, boys. Essendon, oh, God, the relief. Richmond is like, ah. Oh. So have you seen what at the final we- game next week is? Uh, no, not yet. Gold Coast Essendon Ooh, up there. Nice. <laughs> Don's are going to win. I told you. They're unstoppable. Yeah. Hawks flying. Absolutely stoked with that win because this is the thing. The big difference for the Hawks fans at this point is going – this is exactly what North fans thought they were getting yes. by this time from last year, yep, right? Yep. A couple of wins in Clarko's first couple of games. Like, we're back. Yes, Rue Ball, let's go. And now they stink. The and Lions, they're like, should we fire Chris Fagan? Don't know. This is not very good. No. Melbourne, they're just like, what are we? St. Kilda. <laughs> just like, pack her up. St. Kilda fans line. are depressed. In the office, they just look at me and they're like, yes, Alex, I know. And Adelaide, Kurana. They're feeling good. They're feeling fine. They're going to get on the tins. They're having a good time. And the Weagles, it's like, that's all right. Can we just go home and get Yeah, West Coast, like, we beat Melbourne last week. Who cares? Nice one. What about best on ground of the week? Who was the best player we saw? Leek Elia for his Leo Barry. You yeah. star impersonation, maybe. Camden McIntosh for looking like an 1880s gold prospect. He can be best mates with Alex. But no. How is he only 30? I, I've already made yeah. I'm like, he could be 130 and yeah. we would not blink. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, but... Obviously, my beloved Patrick Cripps, who I would not trade any player in the AFL for because he's amazing and I love him dearly as the Except. captain of the Carlton Football Club. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I never said anything otherwise. He's actually Cripper, got the football right he now. He does actually have the football. <laughs> I love Cripper. He was incredible in that game. I game. just stiff up. Just sit Rochelle. down, Josh Rochelle. Rochelle. <laughs> Rochelle just got put into the dirt. <laughs> Oh, he knows it too. <laughs> He's like, that sucks. Everybody's going to be giving me crap about this for the rest of my life. Oh, the replay's oh, even no. better. Come on. Oh. Sit down. <laughs> Woo. That couldn't have worked out any better. Anyway, Cripper was incredible this week. <laughs> Maybe Harley Reid actually makes a late run of this. And for you, Alex? Uh, Chad Warner for yeah. dead set, grabbing the roof, taking that mark uh, right in front of me for kicking four goals and just going, I'm just going to absolutely win this game on my own. Love that. Oh, mate, no, mates. Uh, obviously, the umps in that Carlton game, there was a lot of chance. I can't say the words. Yep. Even like my five-year-old son was like, are we going to join in? I'm like, I don't think that's setting a good example for you, buddy. <laughs> He did, he did look happy with his uh, hot dog that you sent in the group chat. He deleted a hot dog and half a bag of twisties and an icy bowl and, like, most of a bottle of water and had a great time. So you so. have to mortgage your house again. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Please send me $200. <laughs> I'm just going to steal it from Alex's wallet in a second. Uh, who's on, mate? No mates for you. Bevo. No one turned up to his press conference. So this was overblown to a degree, right, because everybody had been – Oh, no, I, I saw some idiot from a radio station today Swans, yelling about it The too. Swans presser had gone late. And then everybody just gone there to chat to the players who were yep. in the rooms. And Bevo, who plays for a Melbourne team, had one dude at his press. But it's time. because Bevo apparently turned up early. The Swans meeting goes a bit late. And all the media people from The Age, The Herald Sun, wherever else, are getting interviews with players because it's the rare time you get access to the players. And they're like, yeah. And then Bevo's like, oh, I guess, yeah. Oh, righto. Yep. And it's like, okay, but relax. It, it's broadcast live on the TV, so I'm sure someone's sitting in the office here in Melbourne or somewhere. Tappa, tappa, tappa. Exactly. So it's not like you're getting any any gold that no one else is going to find out. It's like, oh, yeah, we'll just get old mate back in the office to blog it, whatever. Uh, why I can't stand I had two amazingly beautiful days here in Melbourne this weekend, and neither of them involved an open roof at Marvel Stadium. Is this where I tell you I was involved in an open roof on Friday night? So you had an open roof for the soccer. Yes. On Friday. Which, know curiously the- enough, bracketed a Thursday night football game at Marvel and then two games Saturday and Sunday for beautiful days I outside. I figured out why they don't open the roof. Why is that? Seagulls. 
There were a lot of seagulls in the soccer. There were so, so it's many seagulls. Same time, just get a couple of peregrine falcons. Away yeah. we go. <laughs> That'll fix a quick smart, just saying. <laughs> but yeah, that there was a lot of seagulls. And the thing was, it wasn't they were just on the ground. They were flying around the crowd, dive bombing at chips, and it was nice. hilarious. Uh, open the roof. Just what are you doing? <laughs> Just open the roof. <laughs> like, it was so beautiful, like, Saturday afternoon in Melbourne. Yeah. You're like, this is a waste. Even today. Same with today, too. Uh, but also the in- inconsistency of the umps. I can't stand it. Like, the inconsistency is the thing that kills you across the board, obviously. It's been a brutal round. And also, I just don't want them really deciding games. So, anyway, yours, Alex. Overlap. 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 Jeez. So, we had two games yesterday started the exact same time at 145. Then we got the free Geelong and GWS game on its own, which was great, which then led into Richmond and Essendon being on its own. Loved it. Then today, at some stage, all three games were overlapped. So, I, I watched the, the, the finale of Hawthorne and Brisbane, which means I missed the first quarter of Melbourne and St Kilda. Yep. By the time that the second quarter of Melbourne and St Kilda started, uh, sorry, the, the halftime, Adelaide and West Coast had started. So there's all overlap. You can't just watch the footy. So I've literally missed a bunch of Melbourne and St Kilda by choosing to watch Hawthorne and Brisbane and Adelaide and West Coast. What are you doing, AFL? Figure it out. This Whereas isn't rocket surgery. Next, w- next week, Jim. Yes. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday 1.45, Saturday 4.35, Saturday 7.30, Sunday 1 p.m., Sunday 4 p.m. What is that? No overlap. Yes, I understand. We have we have, we have two less games, <laughs> so. but it's also like you could play the Sunday 1 o'clock game at 12.15, push the, the 4 p.m. game to 6 p.m. and have a game smack bang in the middle and then somewhere else figure it out. Maybe so. Monday night football. Just do Monday night footy. Monday night footy. All right, very quickly then, Supercoach Wash. It was a brutal week, I think. If you look at some of the top scores, oh. there hasn't been too much great stuff. You and had Connor I got, I got absolutely belted in this week. Um, it was absolutely shocking. So C. Rose, Noah Anderson, my beloved midfield, PODs, absolutely shocking. Gear. So I started the f- in draft Thursday night with Bont and Warner, 135, 144. I'm like, I'm home. Go. I'm going to win this. Connor OZ, 39. Stephen Canelio, 42. So Jack Lacocious, Jacos, 51. Dacos is very good. We should have also just gone with Maximus Gornicus. I think, again, uh, he ripped off 180. <laughs> Jordan Ridley is back, 162. Chadley Warner had 144. Yeah, look, there's some really good ones. But Carl Amon had 117 as well. Bad. Cripper had 131. But look, it's like the sort of push down on some of the other big ones was uh, tough to see. Like Caleb Sarong only managed 91. And even after a pretty good game, he's like ineffective disposals sort of put a, you know, stymie Dawson's on track for 200, nice. by the way. Let's go. Uh, there you go, though. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. Joe Rich is very good. He was. I enjoyed that. Yeah, if you had him, oh, you're laughing with that price wow. rise this week. Very nice. But anyway, there you go. That'll do it for AFL Today for round 11 for today. We'll be back on Wednesday with the Midweek yep. Madness Show, which will be very fun. Thanks to Alex for jumping on because Stats Guy died, apparently. <laughs> yeah, hopefully Stats Guy's all right. I'm sure he's all right. <laughs> Just shooting out both ends, I think. Ah, it's all right. <laughs> Remember to smash a like across all the socials to see us doing lots of fun stuff throughout the week, filling in all your footy gaps throughout Power the Power ranking should be up by the time you're listening to this too on TikTok. Very nice. Yep. So get around the YouTube, Facey, Instagram, TikTok, X, for the AFL Today Show, as well as the Cricket Today Show, Cricket Today Podcast, as it were, Football Today Podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, and hold all tickets for your GGs. Hell yeah. Subscribe, star, and like all those shows across your podcast apps and YouTube and gear. Uh, get them Get around him like Steve Alessio just missing a set shot under the roof at Telstra Dome back in the olden days. To beat the Sydney Swans. Colonial Stadium. Love that. Anyway, that's it. What a fun round. Yeah. We've got buys next week. Jeez, that'll make it a little bit easier. All right, we'll catch you later this week for more AFL Today. Until then, look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.